Good afternoon. I hope you're having a good morning. Hope you're having a great day. So I posed a question in this subject. Are you flexible? You know, they say the story about this guy who, who really wanted to get a new boat. And his wife said, are you crazy? We're not getting it. They fought back and forth. He said, fine, why don't we make a compromise? We'll get a new boat, but you'll name the boat. So his wife, being a flexible woman, you know, a woman who can't much, says, no problem. So they get the boat. He's all excited. And they're ready to, for, the, for, for it to go on its first voyage. And they come. And she names the boat. And he comes and he sees the name is painted all over the side. And the name says, for sale. That was the name that she named the voyage. Sometimes we're not really flexible. And we're not really ready for compromise. This week's Torah portion gives us seven of the ten plagues that God gave the Egyptians to, to soften Pharaoh's heart and to allow him to let the Jews go. But yet every time Pharaoh's heart hardened and hardened and he became more stubborn and more inflexible. And it, the boiling point comes at the seventh and last plague in the portion of the era, which we're reading the Shabbat. It's the plague of hail. And the Torah tells us that Moshe waved his hand over the heavens and suddenly it started hailing like huge pieces of hail like never before but in the hail was tremendous fire fire and hail the rabbis say that the hail the water and the fire made a compromise even though one puts out the other not to extinguish each other just in order to give pharaoh's punishment and it rained down the torah tells us like never before on egypt and pharaoh it devastated, it, it killed the people, it killed the animals, it killed the vegetation, the trees, everything. Pharaoh calls Moses, pleading with him, he says, Moshe, he says, listen, you know what, I was wrong, you're right. God is the one that's right, do me a favor. I agree that God is right, why don't you pray to God that he take away this plague? And guess what? Moshe says, no problem. I'm gonna go pray to God. But I know that you are still stubborn and you don't fear God. That's what Moses tells him. And then, in the middle of nowhere, the verse tells us like this. It says that the wheat, to be exact, it says that the wheat, the flax and the barley were broken. Because the barley was ripe and the flax was in its stalk. Hence it was strong, it was broken and destroyed. But it says... The Torah continues, the wheat and the spelt were not destroyed because they were unripe. What's the verse telling us, basically? The flax and the barley that were strong, that were ripe, they got destroyed. The hail broke them. But the wheat, which was soft, didn't get destroyed. And then Moses goes out, he waves his hand, and suddenly it stops. But all the commentaries ask, what's going on here? What's the, what's the Torah telling us when it comes and tells us that the flax and the barley were broken because they were, they were ripe and in the stalk, yet, yet the, 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 the wheat and the spelt, because it was unripe, was not broken. Well, what's the message here? In fact, Nachmanides, the great sage, says, I have no idea what these two verses are doing here. But what is it doing here? What's the message? If, if Moshe wanted to give us a little bit of an assessment at what the hail did, he should have gave it us after it stopped or before he went to Pharaoh. Why? Right in the middle of when Pharaoh tells him, I, you know what? God is right. And then he tells Pharaoh, I know you guys. You're saying God is right, but you really don't fear him. Oh, suddenly he gives us an assessment that the wheat and the, that, that, that the barley and the flax, because they were ripened and the stalks were destroyed, yet, yet the wheat... And, uh, and, and the others were not because it was soft. What's going on here? And the answer really comes from something the Talmud tells us in the tractate of Tainus. And by the way, this whole idea is really a message and a powerful lesson to us as you listen in. The Talmud says like this, A person should ever always be pliant as a reed and shouldn't be stubborn or strong as a cedar tree. What's the message? The message is understood through a very beautiful story about this water that had right on the side of it was growing reeds. And a big 
cedar tree. The cedar tree was growing big and its branches and it was strong and it was majestic. And at the bottom were these little reeds that were moved with the wind and they were short. And one day, this huge storm came, hurricane proportion, epic. It destroyed as big as the cedar tree was, as strong as it was, it got destroyed. Yet the reeds weren't destroyed. So the cedar tree turns to the reeds and says, I don't understand. How could it be that me, the big cedar tree, is, got, is strong? Yet you, the little reeds, are still here. And I'm gone. And I'm broken. And the reeds is very simple. You see? Because we were flexible. When the wind came, we moved to the wind. We were soft. You were strong. You were proud. You didn't move. You got destroyed by the strong winds. And that's really the message in our life that the Talmud is telling us. It says, always be flexible, pliant like a reed, and don't be stubborn like a tree. You know, in life, in business, in marriage, we have to be able to be flexible. If you want to have a happy marriage, and you're going to be stubborn, and you're never going to compromise, you're not going to get anywhere. You'll be single, like so many Americans are divorced. And the same thing is in a business. If you want your business to grow, you have to be flexible. You have to be able to listen to others. You have to be able to hear other ideas. And that's really what the Medrash is telling us. Always be, the Talmud, always be pliant like a reed. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't have principles. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have ideas that you never give up on. Of course, when it comes to Torah, when it comes to God, when it comes to faith, when it comes to, to who you are, your essence and your inside core, you never give up. The reeds also have roots, but they're underground. Of course, you have to, you see, some people think that being flexible so shows I'm spineless. I don't have any, 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 I'm not macho. I'm not a guy. I'm not strong. But on the contrary, people that are really confident and really strong in the inside are not scared to be flexible, are not scared to compromise because they know who they are and they're confident. People that say, no, I'm never compromising. I'm never, I'm going to be strong. I'm not going to be flexible. Those are the people that are really insecure inside. That's what Moses was telling Pharaoh. The seventh play came. God's begging him, send the people out. He's getting beaten up again and again. Moses, Mo, Pharaoh says to Moses, listen, now I believe in God. Moses says, no, you don't believe in God. And then he gives him a predicament. He says, listen, look outside. Look at what happened. To the flax, look at what happened. To all the things that were ripe, that were strong, they're destroyed. And look at what happened to the things that were unripe, that were soft, that were flexible, they're still here. Moshe was telling Pharaoh an important lesson in life at the end. Look at what you are. You've been stubborn, you've been hard, you didn't want to listen to God, but what happened to you? Your country's going to hell in a, in, in a basket, You're this, everything is gone. The same thing is in our life. You know, they say there's an old adage that in Africa, the way they catch monkeys, they have a very easy way. They put this type of a bucket that's closed and it has only a little space for the hand of the monkey to go in. And they put delicious nuts in there that the monkeys love. And at night, the monkeys come and they smell the food and they put their hand into the nuts and they take a handful, but then they can't get their hands up. And the next morning, they come and they catch them because the monkeys refuse to let go of the nuts to get their hand out. They can't give up. And maybe in this way, Darwin is right. Sometimes we're, humans are like monkeys. We're so stubborn, like a cedar, and we don't want to be flexible. It ends up hurting us in so many ways. And that's the message, the most beautiful message that the Torah is giving us in this week's Torah portion. I look around, you know, we're coming to, to Inauguration Day and our country is so divided. And there's always something, but we have to forge ahead. Look how powerful our country is. Look what we've done with the vaccine. Look at, at the growth. Look at the markets. Look at look at our, 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 our state of our country, even through a pandemic of a year. We're blessed. We need to learn how to compromise. We need to be able to, to look at each other and say, listen, I'm strong enough. I'm confident enough that I'm ready to compromise with you, that I'm ready to be flexible. In marriage, when we have a mezuzah on the door, you know what we do with the mezuzah? We put the mezuzah on a slant. Why do we put the mezuzah on a slant? Because one opinion says it should be straight, and one opinion says it should be sideways. So the question is, in Judaism, we never compromise. We always go according to majority rules. So why suddenly when it comes to mezuzah, we compromise? And you know what the answer is? A mezuzah 
represents a building of a home, a marriage. It's the first message we give a couple when they get married. You want to be successful? You need to compromise. Remember what the Talmud says. Always be flexible. Like a pliant, like a reed, and don't be stubborn like a cedar. It's a fascinating story. Rabbi Gamliel, the great sage, the Talmud tells us, the Midrash says, one day he was, he was going on a boat, and he saw another boat coming that was destroyed, and he got frightened. He saw Rabbi Akiva was on the boat, in the water. Oh, you think, what's he going to do? And suddenly he sees, comes back to the yeshiva, and he sees Rabbi Akiva's learning there. He says, Rabbi Akiva, how are you here? You were on that boat that got destroyed. You were in the water. He says, very simple. The boat got destroyed. And one of the pieces, the plank of the wood, was on the water. And I, I hung on to him I, I, for my dear life. And every time a wave came, I bent my head and let the wave go over me. You want to survive in the world we live in? We need to be flexible. Look at Pharaoh. Look how stubborn he was. He didn't want to listen. And look what happened to him. And look what happened to his country. Look what happened to his people. And that's what Moses is. That's why the verse is right there. In the middle of Moses talking to him, before he goes out to speak, Moses says to him, Pharaoh, look at you. Look at what's destroyed and look at what not. All the stubborn things are gone. I beg all of us, as a nation, as a country, as a people, in your family, in your home, with your friends, be flexible. Listen to someone else. It doesn't mean you're spineless. It only means that you're so confident in who you are that you're ready to hear something else, that you're ready to accept other ideas to come together as one community, as one people, as one nation. And then and then only will we prosper like no tomorrow. God bless you. Have a great day.